our eternal Heavenly Father. We ask, Lord, that what we say and do today would bring you glory and honor. And as we remember our dear brother, we ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Lead us in amazing grace. Let's sing it together. I'll give you an introduction. And let's just, Psalm 98, the Bible says, praise the Lord with a harp. So we're getting biblical here. All right, here's amazing grace. Here's your introduction. This time, the family, the girls, and Brian will come and share a little bit about their dad. And then I'm going to have a short message, and then I want you to open it up for any and all of you that would love to come and share. <laughs> you don't have to come up front. You can raise your hand, and we would just love to hear some of the, uh, the times that uh, Bubs has shared with you through action or through spoken word and given you some encouragement. Sometimes it, just to help you get your life back on an even keel. That happened in my life a couple of times talking to him as well. So that will come later on in our service. And then Greg will uh, lead us again in another wonderful hymn. So at this time, I'm going to let the family come up and share. Um, although I'm... Mom and Dad's oldest child, I missed certain events in Dad's life. I missed Dad's name change from Lowell to Bubs. Some wise person knew he needed a name that was unpretentious. I missed his childhood, his school years, his time in the Navy defending this great nation. I missed the day he asked Jesus to be his Savior. And I missed the day he and Mom promised <laughs> I do to one another in 1946 but not too long after these events I became an observer of the man I called dad 
He was a constant defender and provider for our family. He worked harder than most people I have ever known. He never went to the gym. His farming, gardening, <laughs> wood chopping, hiking, and working became the strength he would retain until the end of his life. He was a faithful spouse and protector for mom for 74 years. Dad's brain and hands were tirelessly creative. Amen. I grieved for several years knowing that that creativity was draining out of him. He adored children. He was a man's man with the heart of a whimsical child. He had an incredible sense of humor and fun. To this day, I can't imagine having a super close friend without those qualities. But more than all of these things, the overarching drive and mission of Dad's life was his relationship with Jesus. His Bible was worn, rebound, underlined, highlighted, and lived out. He lived by faith, and he believed God at his word. Isaiah 48 says, The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. Dad's body withered and his strength faded, but the word of God in his heart went straight to heaven with him. 2 Corinthians 5, 6-9 says, So we are always confident, knowing that we, while we are home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well pleasing to him. That is what dad taught me with his life. He is now well pleased to be present with the Lord. Thank you, everybody, for being here today. Such a gift to have you here with us. As I hope the whole world knows already, I really, really, really love my dad. <laughs> so what an honor it is to talk about him this morning. Ephesians 4.1 says, Therefore I implore you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, showing tolerance for one another in love, being diligent to preserve the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. In God's great grace, my dad walked worthy. 96 years as a farmer, a teacher, a craftsman, a fisherman, a father, a grandfather, a great grandfather, so much more. But aside from his calling as a child of God and a redeemed man in Jesus, nothing was more precious to my dad in this life than the calling that he had to be a husband to my magnificent mom. He loved her deeply, faithfully, with his whole heart, with his best. And one special, if I can get through it, <laughs> one special family story paints this picture beautifully. I think it gives you a very keen insight into the heart of my dad. That dad's love for mom came from a heart of gratitude. He lived every day with a heart of gratitude. The story begins on the joyful occasion of the birth of my awesome older sister, Peggy. Following Peg's delivery, Dad had gone home from the hospital for a little while, but later he returned to the hospital to visit Peggy and Mom, and he brought a gift. Now, bringing a gift to a new mom isn't unusual, of course. Other new fathers visiting their wives might have brought flowers or jewelry or perfume or something beautiful like that. Not Farmer Dad. His gift was unique and perfectly awesome. It was a simple little plate on which sat three small but perfect strawberries. Mom knew the berries were an extra special gift. You see, they were in fact the first fruits of the strawberry crop for dad in the garden that spring. First fruits, a very special gift from a farmer. In the Old Testament, God asked the Jewish people to give back to him as an offering of thanksgiving their first fruits of the harvest, the first of their grain, produce, oil, firstborn animals, everything. This always pointed the people toward the Messiah. You see, God's future very best gift to the world would come in the person of his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus was God's first fruits. 
We love because he first loved us, the Bible says. The humble gift of those strawberries represented to my dad, the farmer, the man of deep faith, an offering to the one who had given him life, a precious, singular, simple, humble gift presented to mom with thankfulness to God for his gift of Peggy to them. Those strawberries were a genuine, sacrificial, worthy gift of love. Blessing because we are blessed, giving our best because the best has been given to us, giving what is most precious, the first fruits of our lives. That was dad. God blessed mom and dad, as Peggy said, with 74 years as husband and wife, five children, 13 grandchildren, 21 great-grandchildren and counting. Yes, with humility, gentleness, patience, love, diligence, and a heart of gratitude, dad walked in a manner worthy. His life pointed us to Jesus, and I am infinitely grateful to be his daughter. As I was reflecting back on Dad and his impact on my life, I reread this little book, Rick has it up here, <laughs> that he had written a few years ago, um, just as he approached his later years in life. He described his life as active, interesting, very special, and memorable, an understatement. <laughs> he loved life, he loved people, but most of all, he loved his work. He introduced his book by reflecting on his amazing, godly heritage. German immigrants who were hardworking, generous, honest, responsible. They all loved God. And so he says his story began. Joshua 24, 14, and 15. Whom will you serve? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. So as dad daily lived out these qualities, so my story as his daughter began as I followed those same active, adventurous steps. Dad always had time for us <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> and involved us in everything he loved to do, whether it be waking up to a plate of artistically crafted pancakes, <laughs> to sharing a shortcut through six feet brush to First Lake, to receiving an anatomy lesson on freshly caught trout, Remember, you catch, you clean. <laughs> he discovered also the secret to deep sea fishing was taking five seasick kids in his boat to chum for him. <laughs> Camping, insect displays, plant and bird identification, the perfect roasted marshmallow, cottonwood, excuse me, cottonwood whistles, grass reed lizard catchers were all a part of our adventure. At home, he taught us gardening, woodworking, every type of craft that is imaginable to mankind. Daily devotions at the dinner table and church life, which he was always an integral, integral part of, trained our hearts to love Jesus. As I grew up, his love and influence extended to my children and grandchildren. He was always a kid at heart and had time to teach and lead them into mischief. Megan remembers his wit. Dessert must be eaten before meal in case of the rapture. <clears throat> it is always better to ask forgiveness than permission. During the hardest trial of my life, too, he was always there to support, protect, encourage, love, and lend a helping hand. My daughters have been, and their families have been the blessed recipients of this sacrificial, unconditional, committed love their grandfather lived. Courtney remembers her too much stay at the ranch. The love, the support that daily came in a form of a captioned cartoon that not only ministered to her heart, but to the nurses, the staff and her friends. At the end of God's or at the end of Dad's book, he thanked God for each of us. And I want to thank Dad. And may we heed his challenge there too, that it is now our turn to take carrying on this gift of the godly heritage that he left.
And Dad was the strongest man I ever knew, and yet he also had a tender heart. And you can see from each of us kids that uh, <laughs> we got those tender hearts, and it's, it's tough to stand up here on a day like this and, and do this kind of a talk. You know, for 31 years, I stood in front of a classroom of 80, 80 people, and it was no problem at all, but, you know, to stand here, and it, it's tough. Um, so I'm going to read here because I, I, it's tough. A number of years ago, when we were at Grand Avenue Church, I was asked to preach about the, the Father Heart of God one Sunday. And when I was preparing for that speech, God gave me a vision at night to reveal his heart to me. And in that vision, I saw Jesus sitting there in a chair. I saw his face. He had these eyes of love and compassion. And uh, the way he looked at me, it showed me just how much I, he cared for me and how much uh, I was loved by him. And uh, I remember sitting up on Jesus' lap, embracing him, looking into his eyes, and I knew that I was loved. I knew that I was cared for, and I knew that I was special. And that's the way that God sees each one of us. He sees that, that we are precious, that we are loved, that we are his kids. Amen. And he came to give us eternal life because of that love. And I remember that embrace when I, when I was sitting in Jesus' lap, looking into his eyes. It was one of those embraces where you knew that you'll never forget that embrace of love, that, that envelopment of, of pure love. Just to experience that and know that, it meant a lot to me. And at the end of, of that uh, sermon, that talk on the Father Heart of God, to help further illustrate uh, what I shared with the congregation, I had my son Josh, who was about two or three years old at the time, at the end of the sanctuary, and I had him run up to the front. And he was like two or, two or three years old. He gave me a big bear hug, and we embraced and held each other. And then I said to the congregation, that is how God wants us to see him. He wants us to see him. as a loving father. He wants us to know him in intimacy and in a relational way. That love that I experienced in that vision, holding on to Jesus and embracing him, that was a great example of my relationship with my father. He loved us deeply. He spent quality time with us. You knew that you were special you knew that you were loved. And it wasn't just me, and it wasn't just my sisters that felt that way. I witnessed mom and dad show that kind of love to so many people. So many people that were broken, that had family problems, that were dealing with the struggles of life. I saw mom and dad share that, that godly love with them. And they all felt special too. Excuse me. Uh, one verse that reminds me of dad, one of the many, <laughs> is Psalms 1. It says, How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree firmly planted by the streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither, and whatever he does, he prospers. That's Psalms 1, 1 through 3. Dad was that flourishing tree planted by the stream, rooted in God, rooted in God's word, bearing fruit in season, ever prosperous. That is God's heart for each of us. Even in our last seasons of life, flourishing, planted, deeply rooted, bearing fruit, his purpose for us is to love him with our whole hearts and from that love to fiercely love others. 
leaving behind a rich legacy of faithfulness and love. That was my dad. Amen. What an amazing legacy he left us. And from those deep roots in God's word and that intimate relationship that we have with him, our faith can be a living example of Jesus to others, a reflection of his glory. That was my dad. Deep, strong, loving, faithful, humble, kind, patient, even when I shot him in the butt with a gun. <laughs> Giving, serving, talented, whimsical, finishing well. Well done, good and faithful servant. That was my dad. Amen. about my dad my heart fills with great joy as my mouth utters thank you thank you God for blessing me with one of the greatest treasures my dad a true gift and blessing to me and all who knew him in honor of my scholarly father I'm going to read out of the Living Bible one of our favorite Bible verses which truly depicts my father's life it's the same as my brother read Psalms 1, 1 through 3, but in the Living Bible. <laughs> oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or stand around with sinners, or join with mockers, but they delight in the law of the Lord. Meditating on it day and night, they are like trees planted along the river bank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all that they do. One of my fondest memories of my dad was his diligence to study God's word throughout the day on a daily basis. Let's face it, he loved Jesus. He wanted everyone to know the hope. No matter what dad did, he stood for the things of God. Many times to the scoffing of the world to make sure they were introduced to his Lord and Savior. Whether at our cherished family holiday get togethers where we all started our time in God's word and in prayer, at the cabin, teaching a Bible study, or at his workplace, Foothill High School, he would faithfully share his faith. Oh, how fortunate people my dad touched. His, his entire family was absolutely blessed by his testimony and dedication to faithfully love mom and all of us with a passionate grace-filled 24-7 commitment it was truly amazing Matthew 5 16 says let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your Heavenly Father Amen. dad lived a wife life well done besides his influence in keeping the important things first dad was just an amazing God guy in all that he did he was my favorite fisherman and so <laughs> gifted at it. This became one of my favorite hobbies of my lifetime. Dad and I spent many hours fishing in streams, lakes, or in the ocean, usually catching our limit every, t every time. Excuse me. Dad was truly a fisher of man. We love and miss you, Dad. Thanks for a life well lived. Thank you, family. Uh, what a testimony to uh, a legacy, a, a great man of faith. I uh, spent some time fishing with Bubs as well and hiking and 
camping and he was like a second dad. In fact, my dad and, and Bugs were friends. And uh, now they're together, rejoicing in, in Christ. No, I think I'm good here. Thank you. Bugs was born September 21st, 1924 in Santa Ana. And he died April 20th. Went to be with the Lord in Santa Ana. And he lives in heaven. Bubs was a builder, a designer, an architect, a dreamer. The Spirit of God was working in his life. One of his favorite verses was Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he'll direct your paths. A great psalm that seems to picture Bubs is Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he gives his beloved sleep. Behold, children are a heritage of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed but shall speak with their enemies in the gate. One verse that, actually a couple of verses in Kings speaks of Solomon building the temple. I'd like to read them for you. So he built the temple and finished it, and he paneled the temple with beams and boards of cedar. And he built side chambers against the entire temple, each five cubits high. They were 